earlier this week, version 1.3 and respectively a few days later the according hotfixes 1.3.1 and also 1.3.2 of Assetto Corsa Competition hit the live servers. Introduced were minor changes in the physics department, quality of life features in the UI and most importantly the release of the DLC pack which was already announced all the way back in autumn. But more on those matters in this video, so stay tuned. Starting off, a few things in the MFD were changed and we also got some entirely new features. The most impactful is probably the addition of the condition of your tires and also the option to calculate the total fuel under the pit strategy tab in the MFD. This makes it a whole lot easier to adjust your pit stop settings on the fly since you don't have to manually calculate everything by yourself during your stint and should therefore also relieve some stress towards the end of the race where I for example often ran in the situation where I wasn't sure if I'm going to make the race with my current fuel or having to turn down my engine map a bit because I misjudged the amount of fuel added during my pit stop. But anyways, another small but very welcoming change in the HUD is a new bar which displays the engine map you're currently running on. However, alongside this feature also came an overhaul of the complete HUD which makes part of it a lot cleaner and a lot more readable. Next on, differently from all the other updates so far, there were only changes made to already existing physics elements instead of introducing new features. First of all, the tire model was tweaked a bit so that it now interacts better and more accurately with Kunos' latest physics feature, the chassis flex. It is now also a bit more sensitive regarding tire pressures and wet tires got quote unquote wear and grip adjustments. However, as I seldom drove in the rain before, I am not able to tell whether wet tires are more or less grippy. So if you are a bit more experienced than me under wet conditions and can feel a difference, please leave a comment stating your opinion about these changes. Where I am a bit more experienced though is driving behind other cars. If you also happen to do this quite often, I have great news for you, as the slipstream simulation was also adjusted. The car in front now gains less speed, while the following one gains more. Now, before we come to the contents of the DLC, we are shortly going to take a look at one of the most significant changes in this update. One of the few things that were, up until this day, horrible in ACC was the starting procedure. One was always stuck in an automatically limited speed cap and could just floor the throttle until the lights went out. It was overall a total mess, since a structured double file formation was nearly impossible because people tried to cheat their way up the grid, which was also poorly detected by the game. However, with this update, everything changed. You are now completely free to drive your car to the starting line, warm up your tires, brakes and so on. There is no such thing as an automated limiter anymore. The only thing left is an indicator, which shows you where your car should currently be and whether you are too far in front or too far back. Not only this, but Kunos have predicted any forms of malicious behavior in the starting phase and preemptively taken measures. If you are too far out of your position, you will be teleported to the pits. If you speed in the starting phase, you will get a penalty based on the severity. And to protect the innocent player base, collisions are disabled in the starting phase and activated again as soon as no cars overlap each other. This is, hands down, one feature the player base has requested for a long time and now we finally got it. I truly couldn't be happy about ACC at the moment. Or could I? The answer is yes. Or rather, well, yes, but actually no. But let me explain. As you might remember, Kunos announced the Intercontinental GT DLC last year and with this update it is now available for 15 euros in the steam shop. But what do you get for your money? Included are four of the most iconic tracks in the world. Namely Suzuka in Japan, Kualami in South Africa, Raceway Laguna Seca in the US and finally also Mount Panorama in Australia. Furthermore there are about 30 new teams and 50 new drivers and also more than 45 new car deliveries where some are really cool and some are um, questionable I guess. 
But is the DLC really worth its money? For the same amount of money, you could get yourself one track in iRacing, excluding iRacing's monthly membership costs. It is also a great possibility to directly support ACC's developers and thank them for their efforts. In the end, it is still up to you whether you want to purchase this DLC or not. But I can almost certainly assure you that you won't regret it. Now, if you happen to enjoy this video or could get something useful out of it, you could consider subscribing to this channel for more sim racing content. And with that said, I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.